Hey guys, it's Hannah, and today I'm going to be doing the Book Lover Survival Tag. This tag was created by the lovely people over at Penguin Teen, who I'm actually working with for this video, to help promote the release of A Map for Wrecked Girls by Jessica Taylor. This book is set to release on August 15th, and it follows the story of these two sisters who were once very, very close to one another, but then for some unexplained reason, their relationship begins to fall apart, and they become estranged from one another. I'm not sure if there's some major thing that happens to them, or if it's just something that happens happens over time, but I'm really intrigued to find out why. But after this happens, some sort of storm or something comes along and ends up washing the two of them up onto a shore, and they're kind of stranded on an island together. And then they have to deal with both being stranded on this island, as well as the conflict that they have with one another. The premise just makes this sound wonderful, and this book is blurbed by several very popular authors. Stephanie Garber says that it's emotionally eviscerating and you should prepare to feel. A masterfully written tale of survival, sisters, and love. Jessica Taylor is an up-and-coming name you won't soon forget, which is what Julie Murphy says, the author of Dumplin'. And Stacey Lee, the author of Under a Painted Sky, which I really want to read, says, It's a harrowing story of sisters in need of rescue that's so real it'll have you shaking sand from your hair and wiping tears off the page. So all the blurbs sound really good, and the premise sounds really good, so I'm very excited to read this book. I really like stories about sisters because being an older sister myself, I have a lot of experience with that, and I think the added twist of being stranded on an island would definitely add a lot of drama. But now moving on to the tag itself. Like I mentioned, this is the book lover survival tag. And since it's inspired by a map for wrecked girls about these two sisters being stranded on this island, what I have to do in this tag today is choose five to eight books that I would bring with me if I were stranded on a deserted island. Essentially, my favorite books of all time. And this is impossible. <laughs> so since I'm allowed to choose five to eight, obviously I chose eight because I'm not going to bring any less than that, and eight is still not enough. So I put a lot of time and effort into thinking about this list, and I think I narrowed it down to a solid eight that I would consider some of my all-time favorites. I feel like monthly it kind of changes. If I reread one of my favorites, that one ends up becoming like higher on my list of favorites. So like this list is always kind of fluctuating, but you know, for now, at least in this moment in my life on this day, these are my top eight favorite books. <laughs> so book one obviously has to be a Harry Potter book because I can't go anywhere without having something Harry Potter with me. And it it took me a long time to decide which Harry Potter book I would bring because I feel like the obvious choice would be the first one because then you can always just like start the series and you're not like in the middle of it. But I decided not to do that. I decided to go with Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, which I think is my favorite one in the entire series. Sometimes I think it's the seventh book, sometimes I think it's this one, but objectively I think it's Goblet of Fire. <laughs> the reason I would bring this one is because it is like the climax of the story. It's like that center moment where everything begins to to happen. We've already had three books prior to this and so much has happened in those, but in this book we finally get the actual story of Harry Potter with everything with Voldemort coming more to light and there's so much that happens in this book that I feel like I would never get bored of reading it. And also some of my favorite things just happen in the story like the Yule Ball and so many of Hermione's moments which are my favorite. While I would constantly have to reread the terrible death that is in this book, um, I'd still be okay with it because I love everything else so so much. Also, it's one of the longer ones, so it would take me longer to finish than the very short Philosopher's Stone. The next book I have here should come as no surprise to anyone, and it is The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. This is my favorite book of all time, as you all know, because I never shut up about it. So obviously, I have to bring it along with me because I constantly want to reread this book, which is very strange because I've never actually reread the entire thing before, and I'm very much overdue for that, and I'm gonna change that soon, but I adore this book with every fiber of my being. It has magic, it has flawed characters, it has a beautiful plot that slowly develops, a wonderful slow burn romance, and just everything that I love in books. And it's just my favorite thing in the entire world and I don't wanna go anywhere without this book. I truly think that if I could only bring one book with me, I would probably choose this one even over Harry Potter, which says a lot. But truly the reason I love this book so much is because it reminded me of why I love to read. It has beautiful, beautiful prose that just completely captures you, and you can vividly imagine everything that goes on in here, you can sense everything, and it's just unlike any other reading experience I've ever had. And then that, combined with how much I love the actual plot and the characters as well, just make it so exceptional to me, and I adore this book, if that wasn't clear. So yeah, this one absolutely has to come with me, no question about it. The next book on my list should also come as no surprise, because again, it's another book that I never shut up about, and that is Aristotle 
Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe by Benjamin Alire Sanz. How many more times do I have to recommend this book until everyone has read it? I don't know, but I'm gonna keep doing it. If you happen to not know about this book, it follows the story of this boy named Aristotle who lives in the 80s in El Paso, Texas. And one day Aristotle meets this boy named Dante and the two of them become fast friends and then their relationship begins to develop from there. It's a story about sexuality, about love, about family and your relationship with others and your relationship with yourself mainly. It's beautiful. It has one of my favorite romances of all time, my favorite characters of all time, and it's just such an exceptional book that means everything to me. I have read this book twice now and I've like almost finished it a third time and it's just truly one of the most beautiful stories I have ever ever read. It warms my heart every single time I read it and it always makes me so happy and that is why I would definitely bring it with me. If I ever needed a book to just put a smile on my face, this would be the one I would read over and over again. The next book on my list, again, shouldn't be that surprising. I feel like I'm very predictable when it comes to my favorite books because they're like the only books I talk about and that is Crooked Kingdom by Lee Bardugo. I think it is truly the best YA fantasy novel I have ever read in my entire life. I can flat out say that. It has everything that I look for in a fantasy and just in a book in general. You have badass morally gray characters who are somehow still extremely lovable. You've got a super high intensity action-packed plot mixed with fantastic writing and very significant and relevant and moving themes. It's just such a beautiful book that is so well crafted with some of my all-time favorite characters as well and I would always read this if I were lonely and I like needed friends because I'm gonna be alone on this deserted island and I'm gonna need friends. And the characters in this book series feel like my friends, so I feel like they would always have my back even though I'm gonna be alone and stranded on this island. The next book on my list is Vicious by V.E. Schwab. I could not make this list and not include a Victoria Schwab book because she is my favorite. Vicious is probably my favorite Victoria Schwab novel. It's very hard for me to choose because I love all of them so much, but since this one is a standalone I felt like it was probably the best choice as well. This book follows the story of these two grad students named Victor and Eli and the two of them are roommates and friends and they start working on their graduate thesis which is about the existence of EOs or extraordinary people, people who have superhuman abilities. They eventually begin experimenting with this idea and figure out how to create EOs and that creates a lot of problems. And then the story actually takes place in two different timelines because we have the timeline where they are both graduate students and then we have the timeline 10 years in the future where Victor is just getting out of prison and you're kind of figuring out why all of that is happening and what has happened in these past 10 years. And it's kind of about like heroes and villains and morality and how we define all of those things. And I just love exploring that topic in general, so I adored this book so so much. And I think it would be helpful for me on this island because if I ever needed some sort of like scheming or plotting, like if I had to do that, I would definitely just like look to Victor and Eli because they're really good at it. The next book on my list is The Strange and Beautiful Sorrows of Ava Lavender by Leslie Walton. I feel like this one is probably more of a surprise than the other ones because I feel like I don't talk about this book as often as some of these other books. The Strange and Beautiful Sorrows though follows the story of this girl named Ava Lavender who was born with wings and it's kind of inexplicable like no one really knows why she was born with wings she just was and it's kind of accepted. It's a very magical and whimsical book because magical things just happen at times and it's kind of unexplained but people just go along with it but it's a generational story that is really about love because it follows Ava Lavender, her mother, her grandmother, and her great-grandmother and it tells all of their stories and their relationships with one another and their relationships to love. When I read this book I felt like I learned so much about it and so much about myself in a lot of ways when it comes to love and it was just so beautiful and moving and the writing is just exceptional. I will give a trigger warning for this book for rape and abuse so definitely be aware of that before going into it but otherwise I cannot recommend this book enough. It is just one of my all-time favorites. Clearly it's like in my top 10 and it's just so so good and it makes me feel really warm and happy on the inside so I feel like I would need it with me on this deserted island to just make me feel warm and happy at times. The next book on my list is another one that I feel like I don't talk about enough, or at least I haven't talked about it a lot recently, but I feel like people forget that I actually really love this series, and that is The Infernal Devices, specifically Clockwork Princess. <laughs> this is my all-time favorite Cassandra Clare novel. It is one of the books that actually got me into reading in the sense that like I was reading and then I read this book and I was like, wow, this is what I love about books. <laughs> I don't think a book has ever made me cry as much as Clockwork Princess has 
has made me cry, which you might not think is a good idea to bring with me on a deserted island, but I really like crying in books, so having a book that can make me sob will be very important for me. <laughs> this is my favorite Shadowhunter novel for several reasons, because the characters are just so well fleshed out, I really love the plot, I love their relationships with one another, and I just love where the story goes and how it connects to everything else as well. I just had such a fantastic reading experience with this one the first time I read it, and I've reread it like twice since then, and I still love it just as much, and I just would need it with me because I'd feel like I wasn't whole if I didn't have this book there. <laughs> All right, and finally, the very last book, the eighth one that I would bring with me, is actually a very recent read and a very recent all-time favorite. It's a book that I read like less than a week ago, and it has already made it on my list of all-time favorite books, so that says a lot, I think. And that book is Eliza and Her Monsters by Francesca Zappia. This book took me completely by surprise. I was expecting to enjoy it the first time that I read it because a lot of people were saying that it was fantastic. So many people whose reviews I trusted had really loved the book as well. It was getting so many four and five star reviews so I thought that I would really enjoy it and I was right, I did really enjoy it but I enjoyed it way more than I expected to. <laughs> this is the type of book that has had me thinking about it ever since I finished it, and I like can't get it off of my mind. It follows the story of this girl named Eliza who has created this webcomic online, which has become extremely popular, and it's like essentially famous. There are people who write fan fiction based off of her webcomic, and it's super, super popular, but no one really knows who she is because she's kept her identity as the author anonymous. But one day this boy moves to her school, and she finds out that he is actually the most popular fan fiction writer of her webcomic, but he is not aware of who she is, and that creates a lot of problems for them. But apart from all that, it's really a story about Eliza's struggle with herself. She deals with anxiety, and as someone who also deals with anxiety, I could relate to her on so many levels, like I've never been able to with a different character, and it was just such an incredible reading experience for me because I could actually see myself in a book, and that is not something that happens for me very often. But because of that, and just because of how beautiful the entire story was, it really, really resonated with me, and it has just stuck with me since I finished it. And for those reasons, I want to have it with me because it's genuinely one of my all-time favorites. It's another one of those books that I feel like when I read it, I feel less alone, which is something I'm gonna need on this deserted island, and I definitely feel that way because I can see myself in Eliza's character. And that's just such a rewarding feeling, and I'm just so happy to have found this book, and I'm so happy that it's gonna come with me when I'm stranded alone. But that is it for the book lover survival tag. Those are my eight books that I would bring with me on this deserted island. My eight all-time favorite books, which again I feel really hesitant about saying because I know that like some of them will fluctuate and at different times different ones will be favorites, but for now these are the faves. I love them all so much. I highly recommend all of them. Read them all. <laughs> Once again, a huge, huge thank you to Penguin Teen for sponsoring this video, and don't forget to check out A Map for Wrecked Girls, which comes out on August 15th. But that is it for this video. If you're interested in doing this tag for yourself, definitely go ahead and do it. I'm not going to tag anyone specific, but if you want to do it, you can say that I tagged you, and you can leave me a link to your video, and I'd love to watch it. Also, if you don't make videos, you can definitely let me know what books you would bring with you just in the comments down below, because I'll definitely read through that as well. I love knowing people's favorite books and the books that mean the most to them. Also let me know how many of these books you were able to guess that were on my list because I feel like most of them were super super obvious, but I don't know if anyone would be able to get all of them because some of them I don't talk about as much as others. But if you'd like to follow me on any of my social media, all of my links are in the description box as always. But thank you all so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!